Helmut Marco has gone on to defend Perez after the Mexican driver received a lot of slander for his performance lately, scoring only 28 points in the last eight rounds of the first half of 2024. However, with rumors circulating around Liberty Media standing behind Perez's seat, Marco feels otherwise despite his original comments that the cards will be reshuffled again in 2025, and despite the increased risk that drivers like Lawson will be looking for a seat elsewhere. With this in mind, did Red Bull succumb under the pressure of Perez's sponsors as well as Liberty Media? And more importantly, what does the future hold for him and Red Bull? It's safe to say that Red Bull is a team that has been very much criticized in the past couple of weeks, especially after keeping Perez when high-profile members like Horner and Marco went on to say that his performance will be heavily studied and there'll be a meeting in which the primary topic would be keeping Perez for the remainder of the season. After the Spa Grand Prix, we've seen Ricardo and Verstappen popping champagne, smiling together and having a ride on a helicopter to their home which suggests that they were already told from that Zanvor onwards, Ricardo would be the teammate of Verstappen, the exact cause as to why he was brought back to racing bulls in the first place. Nevertheless, Red Bull went on to deny this as Horner confirmed that Perez will remain in the team throughout the entirety of 2024, which makes a lot of people in the camp angry, including Ricardo and Lawson the most. Helmut Marko, while heavily criticizing the performance that Perez has shown in the past couple of races, has now defended the veteran driver and went on to say that the team doesn't really have options or alternatives as we speak, further adding, there are rumors that the decisions to have him stay is due to Liberty Media's wish for him to drive in Mexico. And it's not true. They certainly want him to race in his own race, but our choice of driver is not based on Liberty's intentions. Admitting that Liberty Media wants Perez to race on his home turf is more or less enough of a proof for where the priorities of the negotiations lied in the first place, but it's still a huge statement for Marco to go on and defend the Mexican driver after saying that he totally collapsed in the last race in Spa. Furthermore, the veteran Austrian said that there isn't any better option for the team at this moment, which will further aggravate drivers like Ricardo and Lawson, as well as Sonoda, who has been driving the wheels off the V-Carb 01 and hasn't been paid enough attention from the Austrian team. Furthermore, Marco said, Perez didn't need to get faster, just more consistent, and given the alternatives, he is still our best solution. To say this while Horner went on to talk about the rich pool of drivers that Red Bull have in their backyard, goes to show that there's a lot that needs to be studied in this team's philosophy, especially after the blunder with Ricardo and how he was seen leaving a meeting with Laurent Mekis, the team principal of Racing Bulls, and Christian Horner, all with smiles during the Spa Grand Prix. It's safe to assume that the situation is not very clear in the Austrian team and some of the management is now focusing more on other issues rather than the ongoing situation with the drivers. On the other hand, the car is now expected to struggle in the last 10 races because of the fact that both Wache and Verstappen said that it's highly impossible for the engineers to add more performance due to the narrow operating window. And it would be like this for the next 18 months before the new regulations are introduced. This is why Verstappen called in for great changes in the upcoming period, because the rival's hunger has now increased a lot and this is something that Red Bull should put their eyes on which is already a handicap because they only have one driver who's fighting for podiums and race finishes up there, and that's Verstappen. Talking about this extent, the three-time world champion said, The drop in performance should be as motivating as the pursuit of success. You can always say so, but I never like to think that way myself. When you're the winning team, you have to push even harder. That should be the mentality and the way it goes. The people who are chasing, you have the hunger to win and the desire to try to beat you and they've been doing a good job of it lately, so it's up to us to respond. What is also very interesting regarding the Perez situation is that even the Dutch Grand Prix have posted an explanation of Ricardo's career so far, naming him a teammate of Verstappen from the Dutch Grand Prix onwards. This just goes to fuel the talk that Red Bull have already informed everyone about the swap of drivers, which at the very least proves that there are better options than Perez for the seat. And this decision has definitely hurt their chances of winning the Constructors' Championship now that McLaren is just 42 points away, with Norris also questioning the decision as to why Red Bull went on to sign Perez instead of Sainz and miss out on the strongest driver on the grid right now. It's hard to believe that Perez is the best option that Red Bull has right now because there are drivers like Ricardo, Lawson, Sonoda and even Hadjar who is performing very well in Formula 2 who are waiting for a perfect opportunity to showcase their talent in Red Bull. 
and by their latest move with Perez, as well as Marco's comments that they don't have any better alternatives. The Austrian team may have just shot themselves in the leg when talking about the academy drivers and their youth, because it's a direct insult to all the work that's been done behind the curtains on the track and not to be recognized by anyone from Red Bull. What's also very important is that Marco hasn't given up on Liam Lawson either. And while he said that nothing will change and Ricardo will remain at Racing Bulls, now it seemed like the seat of the Aussie is not as secure as the one as Perez. Elaborating on Lawson's situation, Marco said, We will announce what happens next with Liam Lawson in September. It's been planned for some time that he would be able to gain more F1 experience in Imola. Even though the competition would like to use him on loan, he's not available for that. This comes after his original statement that Lawson does have a clause in his contract that allows him to go in another team if Red Bull do not provide him with a seat for 2025, which is quite an interesting choice of words for Marco. Likely used in a direction that would give Red Bull a bit more freedom to choose what happens next for Lawson. But even with a lot of room to think about this question, the decision that needs to be made is plain and simple. It's either an F1 seat or not. And if Racing Bulls do not have a seat ready for him, then they should be expecting an activation of the clause that Marco's talked about in the past couple of months. Furthermore, it's very important that statements from Marco regarding the future of Racing Bulls are not something that is suiting Ricardo. Mostly because the veteran Austrian said that this should be a team that consists of young drivers and not veterans and Lawson would get that seat sooner rather than later. To this, Ricardo replied that the Racing Bulls are no longer perceived as the sister team of Red Bull, and they're now making big boy moves, further adding, It does feel different in terms of how I'm involved in the team's decisions, and we've got a new look and with this and that, but your actions have to follow. You bring in new ideas, the new management spent time in other teams and organisations, and yeah, it's just a new way of looking at things. I think that in itself and their intentions and the way they go about it has made people think and stand up and say, all right, this isn't a junior team anymore. We're making kind of big boy decisions and we're taking risks and we're setting targets and high targets and ones that we realistically think that we can attain. Be that as it may, the entire situation with Red Bull is quite complicated right now because you have people going on and stating one thing before a meeting and then the meeting's finished and the statements have changed entirely as if they weren't said by that same person. Sergio Perez is now 7th in the Drivers' Championship, and the only reason why he isn't 8th is because of Russell's disqualification in Spa. And if we're to look at 2019 and 2021, drivers like Gasly and Alpon have been fired by better performance in a far worse car, which is something that makes everybody in Formula 1 scratch their heads as to what's going on in Red Bull. The Verstappen question will always remain persistent until Red Bull fixes their issue. But now that they've openly admitted to not having a quick fix, and with McLaren and Mercedes having extreme faith in their next upgrades, the situation's not looking extremely well for the Austrian outfit as of now. With all of this in mind, do you think that Red Bull has entered the process of a downfall? And more importantly, do you think that Liberty Media, along with Carlos Slim, have had a massive influence over Perez's contract in Red Bull? Let us know in the comments below, and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.